right i think we're live on youtube now uh, we'll have uh, other participants joining on youtube uh, but we still have another minute to go vivek so sure. you might want to respond respond to uh, jasjeet uh, ma'am's comment very nice to know uh, jasjeet ma'am and uh, welcome uh, to you as well as gayatri ma'am uh we would have met because i've been speaking for the last two and a half years almost uh, full time and uh, these states i have spoken to all the uh, various uh, education institutions atul and i have covered about 20 something schools already in this uh, webinar series also. Lock, lockdown period making the But, best use of lockdown period i suppose yes yes it's 32 now we were 32 now so 32 count. schools we have covered oh my wonderful so the whole idea behind uh, this whole thing and i'll be talking about it is to share ideas and inspire each other i think we need that in today's world but it's 3:30 and if uh, i am allowed gayatri ma'am jeet ma'am vivek can we start sure please okay, yeah sure lovely we already have 45 participants 45 teachers and it's uh, increasing so we'll start on time uh, the good thing about uh, Zoom is that we've started. Uh, we we start our sessions right on time by the second. So thank you everyone for making it happen. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Ideas That Matter, a series of webinars sponsored by Shulini University, Kasoli Hills. My name is Atul Khosla, and I welcome all of you. Our guest for today is uh, Mr. Vivek Atre. Vivek is an ex-IS officer, a TEDx speaker, a motivational speaker, and author. and lots and lots of other things but to me a very dear friend and uh, also advisor and professor at shulini university as a quick introduction my name is atul khosla i am the founder and pro vice chancellor of shulini i'm a btech from id kanpur uh, post that i did my mba and then spent 20 years in the industry seven different countries 35 different cities multinationals like mckinsey and company My last job was uh, uh, India CEO for a company called Oliver Wyman, which is one of the largest multinationals in consulting. And then, somewhere around 2013, the teaching bug hit me, and I decided not to make rich people richer anymore, but to actually <laughs> devote my life into teaching. I'm a proud teacher now. I love to teach. I love to speak. Uh, I love to make what I call ordinary people extraordinary. And I'll talk about a little bit about my story uh, as we get into this webinar. but uh, i think we are all waiting for vivek to talk and i'll come after that uh, so before vivek uh, speaks i'll request gayatri ma'am or jajit ma'am to please speak for half a minute introduce the subject and we'll there get into vivek addressing us gayatri ma'am will do the neat pull she's my mentor also gayatri ma'am <laughs> <laughs> lovely over to you gayatri ma'am thank you thank you so much and good afternoon all of you uh i think i should thank shikha ma'am that she uh, approached me for this webinar and uh, it's a great pleasure to have such great personalities amongst us today to guide us regarding uh, emotional intelligence and i'm sure it's going to be a great uh, for half an hour we are going to learn lot many things from mr vivek uh, over to mr vivek thank you Thank you very much, Gajri Ma'am and Jajit Ma'am for the warm welcome, and thank you, Atul Kosla, for uh, your introduction. Always so warm and kind, and glowing, and it's very nice to be speaking at this series of uh, webinars. Today it's uh, Mukut School and uh, two Mukut Schools of uh, Rajpura. Wonderful to be speaking to you, and on emotional intelligence. So I will speak for about thirty minutes, and then. atul khosla will take over and you will find he is a brilliant speaker with his great stories and ideas and he will also take the questions which the teachers may have at the end so looking forward to interacting and uh, <clears throat> let me just say that most people are uh, uh, in this period in need of uh, these kinds of webinars i have spoken to at least uh, 32 schools as atul said with them and shulini has carried out this series so beautifully i am also visiting professor at shulini university and advisor and i visit the campus regularly nowadays not so because of lockdown i am in panchkula and i am carrying out these webinars so i think this is a great opportunity to talk about what uh, we can do to improve our performance at school as well as our lives 
I see about 70 participants on Zoom, and I'm sure there are many more on YouTube also. So it's wonderful to have you all here. So each of you teachers and uh, the two principal ma'ams, it is uh, uh, good to talk about emotional intelligence because if teachers are high in emotional intelligence, then students will also learn and imbibe similar things. Uh, let us take an example of someone before I come into the details of high emotional intelligence. So a teacher walks into a classroom and there are 40 students, let us say, and uh, the class wishes the teacher, the teacher starts the lecture and the teacher finds that one little girl or uh, whatever class, let's say class eight, is sitting with her head on the table and is feeling, looking a little unwell or whatever it is. Suddenly the uh, speaker, the teacher, stops the lecture, goes up to that girl, asks her what is the matter, and the girl replies that uh, something wrong at home. She is feeling very sad. Maybe there was some episode in the morning or somebody is not well. She's okay, physically okay, that student, but she's not feeling up to it, uh, the school day. It happens with everyone. And the teacher takes a very understanding view of that student and uh, helps her, talks to her for three, four minutes individually, and then tells her, you meet me immediately after the class. All the students uh, realize that something wrong, so they also help the student after the class. Uh, by doing this little thing, the teacher has shown extreme emotional intelligence by being concerned about the student, by going out of the way to assure her. Another teacher who doesn't have very high emotional intelligence might just have uh, scolded the girl, might have shouted at her from where the teacher is standing and the student is at the back of the class might have shouted at her, why are you doing this? Stand up, straight up, whatever. And even turned her out of the class perhaps. Uh, so it is uh, after years of experience and uh, thousands of students that you have taught, your basic nature will not change. And uh, if you are uh, the high emotional intelligence kind in the first year, then you're likely to be the same in 30 years or 40 years of teaching. However, Many people who are self-centered, a little angry types, a little short on understanding others, their understanding can improve over the years. And if you have come from a family which is privileged, comfortable, uh, by all means, and uh, there are uh, students who are from poorer families, or there are colleagues who are from other kinds of backgrounds, uh, it is incumbent upon you to actually understand and appreciate and make the other person or persons feel comfortable. So emotional intelligence is about handling people and situation in a calm and balanced manner. Very simple definition which I give, handling people and situations in a calm and balanced manner. Now, what is calm and what is balanced? Calm is your mind, the state of your mind, if your mind is unruffled, undisturbed by happenings, by pressure, by stresses, by phone calls, by lots of things to do, by somebody who is behaving unreasonably with you, even then your mind is undisturbed, then you have very high emotional intelligence. If you are reacting at times and you are uh, responding negatively at times to provocation, somebody is going on troubling you, you are getting angry once or twice in a week or once or twice in a month in return, retaliating. But usually you are calm. Usually you are cool, balanced, not raising your voice, not feeling flustered. Then also you have reasonably high emotional intelligence because overall you are able to handle your emotion. You are not saying things which you should not say. You are not doing things which you should not do. So these are the kinds of traits that high emotional intelligence people have. On the other hand, if you lose your cool at the drop of a hat, or you are very quick to lose your temper, or you are irritated most of the time, or you are the person who is always cribbing about, hai, sadak theek nahi hai, 
ये ठीक नहीं है वो ठीक नहीं यू आर दैट काइंड ऑफ पर्सन देन यू नीड टू सी दैट इफ अदर्स आर कूल एंड काम इन द सेम सिचुएशन then why are you not cool and calm in the same situation of course life is tough life has problems all of us have problems but some people retain their calmness and their balance even under great duress and stress and tension whereas some people lose it quickly so if anger management is one of your problems and you are not able to control your temper your anger uh, maybe when you were a teenager you were throwing things at your mama or your at your sister or brother if there are uh, kids like that and there are kids now in your school like that who are your students and now you have grown up enough to not to uh, not throw things but you are still losing your cool maybe you need to analyze your anger and when you are not angry at that moment sit down and make a list of things which make you angry emotional intelligence means that you are aware of your mind you are aware of your reactions aware of your behavior and you are not supporting yourself unfairly which means everybody else thinks that you are short tempered but you think you are not something is wrong something is a miss that means that if everybody says that you are to angry a person then there must be some truth which you must study so when you are not angry at that time analyze your reaction make a list of six or seven things which make you angry eliminate three of them from your life three things which do not matter so much one of them could be somebody doesn't keep your table clean one could be that this person doesn't wash hands to come for food children are like that sometimes husbands are like that you are getting angry rightly so i am also very particular about washing hands and nowadays with corona everybody has to wash hands for 20 second i also did a small promo video for my fm radio washing hands for 20 second but supposing you lose your temper at things which are not worth it then analyze your mind and come back next day trying to be a little more cool and calm these are traits which are vital analyzing yourself and introspecting vital so therefore try and do this every day or every second day or every week at least also analyze whether you are a person who is self centered self centered may not be angry but maybe selfish maybe thinking only of yourself <clears throat> maybe only worried about your own future your own uh, children not thinking of others of course it is important to worry about your own success failure looking after your family your own uh, home your own other things very important but it is also very important to be compassionate towards others to understand others to be able to care for others and usually i must say all the men watching i must say that ladies are more caring and sharing there is no doubt about it. men may be more daring but ladies are caring and sharing and they are understanding and they are actually the kinds of uh, individuals who have more to do atul khosla will professor khosla will share with you his view point later that uh, the ladies in a home who are also teaching who are also looking after the family they are much more stressed much more things to do many more pressures and tensions however if you are able to retain your balance not be self centered retain your calmness it may be sound a little superhuman at times we are all human but we don't slip up most of the time we slip up only once in a while once in a blue moon once maybe in 10 days one month there you slipped up from your emotional control maybe you can cry also at times it's okay to cry people who cry are actually known to be more understanding and highly developed uh, human being and uh, it's okay to let off your emotions like that it is also okay to write somebody asked me in a webinar earlier and we replied atul and i it is great to write out your thoughts and fears and worries and maybe you can burn the paper after that that way you express yourself on a piece of paper 
also to share your woes with your sister, your mother, your best friend. That's also fine. You cannot keep all the burdens close to your chest. You cannot keep them within you. You have to let them out. That is human. But when the time requires that you behave in a manner which is exemplary, where you don't lose your cool, where you have to be disciplined, there you are in control, despite all the problems that you face in life. So another thing is that uh, uh, people also need to see and be aware of who is with them at a particular time. This self-awareness as well as awareness of the surroundings and company is another facet of emotional intelligence, which means that you are not saying certain things in front of uh, juniors, not saying certain things in front of students, not saying certain things in front of your mother or your mother-in-law even more, not saying certain things in front of your friends also. So you know that these things are to be mentioned only in front of those who are relevant for them or who know that secret. You don't blurt out information which is not meant for the general public. You are able to retain it with you. You also don't scold somebody in front of others. Now you might think as teachers, how is that possible? A student in the class who is badly behaved, you have to scold that person, that student immediately. Maybe yes, but beyond the point, you don't create uh, tension in the class. You tell the student, this is wrong. Tomorrow you please rectify this mistake when you come, come with this paper or whatever it is, or you misbehave, therefore you will be punished. But don't lose your control. And don't also start uh, you know, uh, finishing the matter there itself. Sometimes you can say, please see me after the class. It's a very graceful thing to do. When the child is alone, you can tell the child that this is not expected of a student of the class and uh, of the school, and you are to behave properly. It will be, be having a greater, better impact on the child. If the child is humiliated in front of the class or in front of the school, it has a traumatic impact, a traumatic impact which means that the child will never forget it. And the child will keep thinking of that teacher which scolded, who scolded him or her in front of 100 people that day. So these are very sensitive matters. In a meeting of officers, I would be an IS officer, I was. I resigned, I became a motivational speaker, now I speak every day. But when I was sitting in these meetings, if the chief secretary scolded one officer who is senior to us, Chief Secretary is very senior. We are middle level officers. Supposing there are many people senior to us, but junior to Chief Secretary. If he scolds somebody there and we are watching, how does it feel to him? He doesn't mind the scolding of the Chief Secretary. He doesn't mind that CS is scolding him. He minds that these others are also present. Similarly, a teacher has to see who is present when you are telling somebody negative things or maybe controlling them or scolding them. Similarly at home, in front of the children, the way we conduct ourselves with the spouse, it matters. Children who are young, they're growing up, they see parents behaving in a particular manner, they also adopt that behavior. Let us take positive and well-balanced people on the other hand. They will make sure that their voice is not raised unless there is an absolute demand or it is absolutely essential. And they will make sure that they control their speech in front of children, elders, whatever. I have a little video which I had put out a few months, a weeks, or rather a few days ago, that we must emit positive vibes in front of the elderly and children. Very important to understand who is listening at that time. When you are with your husband or your, you are with your wife, you can talk about anything, even your bitterness, even your quietly, you can get things sorted out. Why should others listen to that? Why should others be privy to that? It is something that we need to control. And controlling emotions doesn't mean that your head will be heating up, your heart will be bursting. As I said, express yourself. So the answer to all this 
is one of the answers is creativity creativity brings out the best in a human being creativity makes you more emotionally intelligent and creativity makes you a happier person ultimately the goal of life is happiness this is what i say in all my seminar seminars and webinars and students also pick up this point very quickly when i speak to them that happiness is the goal of life if happiness is the goal of life then uh, we must emit that happiness and feel that happiness otherwise we are going to be always bound by short term pleasures short term gains short term things creativity is something which gives long term joy you made a painting in your college days it is still hanging in your house now you don't have time to paint but that painting is your pride and joy you sang a song in your uh, uh, college uh, annual uh, or what do you say freshers night when you were students or in the passing out uh, uh, function you remember that creativity like music art sports writing photography sculpture anything will give you meaning to life teachers need not be away from creativity it is not only your subjects that you are teaching which matter it is not only copies and homework and assessments and exams you must take out time for your self development all the time being creative is a way to uh, give expression to your inner being so when you are creative you are uh, maybe you are a public speaker a motivational speaker like i am so i have to be creative in each of my lectures i cannot repeat the same words every time i have to go on changing my module changing my expression sometimes the stories are similar because i can have 10 20 stories i can't have 200 stories with me 10 20 stories or 15 20 stories which i have i will share them one by one wherever but i must express myself uniquely so that i feel creative when you go to a class sometimes you teach the same chapter which you taught last year with a new example or a new story incidentally i keep telling teachers in webinars and this is something very important always tell the students some stories stories when you have time of course even in history it's possible to tell some story from history in geography i don't know how many stories you can tell maybe some explorers in maths it is impossible maybe to tell story but there are so many examples in maths suresh had five apples and so and so had three apples and whatever it was make it interesting and uh, older children of course it is easier to handle them so be interesting in your talks and lectures and classes when you are like that then you are challenging your own self and another facet of being emotionally intelligent is to be inspired and creative inspired and creative means that uh, you get up in the morning with some kind of positivity some josh some enthusiasm you are not only going through the motions and routine in your mindset so you are not just going to school and coming back han ji ho gaya and you had your bindi and dal and whatever it is fine it's great but we cannot go through the go through life in routine we keep trying to bring some zing into life something extra is good and that something extra is something which is uh, which can bring joy to you a joyous person will then become cheerful balanced calm and compassionate so bring internal joy through creativity try and change your routine once in a while sometimes uh, a get together whenever lockdown permits after that and don't worry about masks i have a firm belief that masks will not be worn forever they will not even be worn till the end of this year let me tell you so don't be scared uh, things will change gradually things will change how can we have uh, faces covered with masks for the rest of our lives weddings without with masks are so difficult what is the point but doesn't matter it is important to be safe important to follow norms a stage will come when we will be careful but we will not have to do all these difficult things which we have to do now be sensible so uh, to put it very completely a person with high emotional intelligence 
whether a teacher or a professor or a lawyer or a doctor, is someone who has a balanced mind, has a creative mind, has a cheerful mind, is balanced in reacting and responding to situation, knows when to say what and what not to say where and in front of whom, and uh, controls uh, uh, her or his anger much better than most people. These are people with high emotional intelligence. And let me again say that it is impossible to be perfect. We are imperfect to some extent. But if somebody is better than us, and he or she is also human, why cannot we aspire to be like her or him? More cheerful. Look at Kapil Sharma. I know all of you watch Kapil Sharma show. And I must close with Kapil Sharma because he is the man. Many of us think that he has some pathetic jokes, which are pathetic. But if you sit for one hour, I would say 80% of his jokes are spontaneous. And the man is so creative and full of emotional intelligence. He knows how to speak to different film stars in different ways. He won't say anything wrong. He won't crack the Archana Puran Singh joke on uh, Dinesh and the Dinesh joke on, uh, what's his name, uh, Yadav. He will know exactly what to say to whom in what sequence and that sense of humor exemplifies the high emotional intelligence. And also Amitabh Bachchan on Korn Manega Karodpati, very high emotional intelligence, making the other person feel so good. So that's my talk and uh, thank you for listening. I'm sorry I have to leave for another webinar, but I think I made uh, the most of the time I had. Atul Khosla, thank you for appearing. Over to you. Thank you, Vivek. I think it was wonderful. I think before you go, I'd like to you know, affirm a couple of points and I'll take another 10 minutes, teachers. Uh, the world is changing. You know, the, the world of uh, the 20th century was the world of IQ, where man was actually, as a loner, he could succeed. The world of the 21st century is going to be the world of EQ or emotional intelligence. In fact, the World Economic Forum, Vivek, has pointed to succeed. And those skills are what they call me skills and we skills. We skills are something similar that you've spoken about, which is how do you collaborate? How do you become creative? How do you work with each other? While the me skills are skills of uh, inspiration, skills of creativity, skills of controlling one's emotions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these are going to be the best skills and the most critical skills to succeed. And I think for our students, for our teachers, they will become extremely, extremely critical. I'll bring up, uh, I think you need to run, but I'll, I'll talk about a bit about creativity and how creativity can create. Thank you so much, uh, Atul. Thank, thank you, Vivek. So, uh, so Jajit, ma'am, Gayatri, ma'am, another 10 minutes from me because uh, I wanted to bring up this whole concept of creativity and how it can make ordinary students extraordinary. So uh, one of the things that uh, we've tried experimenting at Shulani is to work with students from lesser privileged families and see how they can do extraordinary work. So our belief is that inspiration and creativity is really what drives people. And I wanted to show a small video of uh, a girl by the name of Aman, who comes from Punjab actually, very close to Rajpura, comes from a small village and was a, uh, was a trouble, uh, trouble student. But something magical happened uh, when she went to her PhD. She has discovered a molecule which when added to water kills uh, bacterial activity by 99%. She's been awarded something called the World Water Fellow, which is a very prestigious award of the United Nations. 100,000 researchers across the world applied for it and she won it, spent four months in Geneva then went and uh, won a 25 lakh award from Tata Trust. Who knows, she might uh, win the Nobel Prize, but let me show this video and I'll bring in creativity and how she did it in a second. So uh, let me just play this one.
So how did Aman do this? I think uh, there were four things that contributed to her success. The first was a very inspirational professor that she started working with, Dr. Saurabh Kulshreshta. It was a matter of luck that they discovered, so this Moringa is nothing but drumsticks and we've been using drumsticks for thousands of years. So Saurabh motivated her to think outside the box. They collaborated with researchers across the world. And then they thought about the whole problem in a very creative way and magic happened. I'm a strong believer that creativity and inspiration can make ordinary people extraordinary. Quickly, my story, I grew up in Solon. I'm a small town boy. I couldn't speak a word of English till I went to ID Kanpur. But I had teachers like you, teachers who put their hands on my head, who made me successful, teachers who pushed me, teachers who made me creative, teachers who inspired me. And I think if you can do that with all our students, there is no reason why every of our students, every one of them succeeds and succeeds in a very, very sizable way. I'll end by uh, just laying out two concepts because you'll say, how do I build emotional intelligence? And I've been uh, helping a lot of clients across the world on building emotional intelligence. Uh, there are multiple tools on that. And one tool which I'll uh, encourage all of you to think about if you don't already know about this is the Maya Briggs type indicator. Maya Briggs basically went out and said that each individual in this world can be described across four parameters, four behavioral parameters. The first is extrovert, introvert. The second is how they take decisions, which is either intuitive or based on data. Third is how did they behave? Did they, were they people centric or are they data centric? And finally, are they organized people or disorganized people? And if you can empathize with your colleagues, if you can empathize with people across those four parameters, you can actually start putting yourself in the shoes. I'll give a small example over here. I'm extremely, extremely disorganized. I'm so disorganized that when I plan a chutti or I want to go to a holiday, I plan it two hours in advance. I pick up the key of my car and I say, let's go. My wife loves to plan her vacation three months in advance. And that's where clashes start happening. So what I have to do is start putting myself in her shoes. So the first question you have to do is, I think there's a question that uh, one of you was asking about self-awareness uh, versus self-control. So self-awareness is also understanding your strengths and weaknesses. While there is no positive or negative behavioral style, but understanding your behavioral style is very, very important. I think you can control only if you're aware. So uh, this is, I can't go through the whole MBTI at this point of time, but it's an amazing tool. I use it every day. I try to understand the person opposite me, his or her behavioral type. And then I try to change my behavior based on uh, the person I'm dealing with. I'd like to end by congratulating all of you teachers. And the reason I'm saying that is because as a teacher, I'm very, very proud of all of you. I feel very proud to be a teacher. And the reason is very simple, I think, all of you are the real Corona warriors. You've gone out and made sure that not a single day of young Indians lives is lost, everyone. You know, I was speaking to my security guard yesterday and I asked him, how's your son doing in a small village? And he said, sir, uske paas to ek minute ka time bhi nahi hai, wo mobile pe pata nahi kya karta rehta hai. So even in small villages, online education has reached. You stepped up to the occasion. None of you, none of me, none of us knew anything about online education. And within a period of two months, we're all experts. We not only know how to get inside a Zoom call, but we're also running our own online classes in an amazing way. I'm just coming out of a, a Zoom seminar with my students and I can tell you out of all the 190 students of MBA, all 190 were present and they've been present for two days. The engagement levels are superb. So magic can happen even through online. Of course, we can't replace the classroom, but we can keep pushing ourselves. I think with this, I wanted to show one more video because I'm very, very passionate about young Indians, young human beings. I want to show this video and then open it up for any Q&A and, uh, and would love to answer that. So one second, it's a two minute video, uh, bear with me. It shows my passion and our passion towards uh, young Indians. Uh, give me one second. I think I have to. One second, please.
throughout history. The young have always been the ones. shape the future. Country's biggest asset, a best bet to conquer the future. So what are you waiting for? Your time to dream is now. Dream of the research that can change the world. Dream of a high-flying corporate career. Dream of higher studies in the world's best universities. Dream of developing cutting-edge technology of the future. Dream of your own global startup. We empower you and enable you to chase your dreams. Before we go, to, go into Q&A, uh, I'd just like to add one last thought. I come from a family of educationist teachers. My grandfathers were teachers. Pretty much everyone in my family is a teacher. My father is a teacher. My mother is a teacher. I'm now a very proud teacher. Let's give and bring pride into the teaching community, into the world of teachers. And I think the day that happens, India will be a great country because it's you people who are making India successful. I can tell you, I again repeat, whatever little I've done in life, and I think I've been reasonably successful in the commercial sense, is because I got some great teachers and I cannot be more than thankful to them. So thank you very much teachers for making India and the world a wonderful, wonderful place. I think with this, uh, we come to the end of uh, this beautiful talk. I think you've been so kind listening to uh, Vivek and me. Uh, I'll request uh, Jajit ma'am and Gayatri ma'am to come uh, live. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to answer those. I think there are a couple of thoughts over here. Uh, I think there's a question around self-awareness and self-control, which uh, uh, again, like I said, to me, self-awareness is what's the first and the most critical thing. And post that, it's about uh, control. If you're not aware of yourself, uh, you wouldn't know what to control. So that's critical. Uh, Ma'am, thoughts uh, and uh, uh, once again, would love to love to answer any questions. And we'll also have Vivek answer questions on email as he as he gets back. Uh, sir, can habit be changed? Absolutely, ma'am. I think uh, there's a saying that if you do something uh, for 21 days at a stretch, uh, you can actually change the habit uh, that you have. Uh, I also was reading that if you do something 10,000 times, you can become a guru or a true expert in that. So uh, I can only give you my example. When I started with this multinational called McKinsey and Company, it was a very, very big job after my MBA uh, to the extent that they'd hired eight people, ma'am, out, uh, out of different business schools of the country. And we were covered on the first page of India Today. So eight of us had our pictures on India Today. It was such a big thing. In my third month, my India CEO calls me and tells me, Atul, we will have to fire you, means we have to let you go. You do not have the communication skills and the style to succeed. So I had the courage, first of all, to go up to him and say, give me a chance, and he did. But his parting words were, if you do not see you succeed in consulting for more than two years. What did I do? I could have gone back and I could have tried and 
I could have hid behind my mother. But what I did was I went to Singapore. Those days, cameras were not available in India. I bought a video camera. For the next seven years, ma'am, I would speak to a camera every day. I would stammer earlier. I was stammering. I could not say R very well. Uh, I would get very, very nervous in front of audiences. For seven years, I practiced every day for one hour speaking to a camera. Till one day in my last job, my CEO calls me and says, Atul, we want you to become Asia CEO. And I say, hey, I'm leaving. I anyway want to become a teacher. Why do you want me? And he tells me, no, 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 no. We think you are God's, you're gifted by God in the way you speak. Point I'm trying to drive over here, ma'am, is that if I could do it, every one of you can do it. All of our students can do it. I think it's about passion, it's about the fire in the belly, and it's about guidance from teachers. I think uh, all the teachers should utilize this lockdown period to control their anger and let the creativity. I, I, I so agree, ma'am. Uh, I have a very terrible anger, I can tell you, and I've been working on it. Uh, Vivek is my mentor and guide. I think one thing that all of you can practice is meditation. Uh, the different formats of meditation. I follow something called the Yogda, uh, YSS, Yogda Sangha Society. But meditation can really, really help. Uh, uh, I think I've become a way better human being in the last two years that I've started meditation. So yes, we have to do our worldly work. And we also have, we are, I think we're entitled sometimes to be angry also. I think that's fine. But ability to say sorry and ability to, uh, to not lose our cool on every small little thing is also very important. Are there are so, questions there, uh, Atul sir? Oh, there is one on, uh, I think, Q&A, that's right. And one on chat also. Okay, I think there's one which says, can we control others' emotions as well? Uh, my answer is yes. I think we need to give a benefit of doubt to people around us. You know, I'm coming out of a lecture where I spoke about networking and I spoke about building relationships. I think relationships come from trust. And we should give people around us a lot of trust. Uh, my belief, ma'am, is that 99% uh, of the people around us are positive and are good. So whatever they tell us could either be situational or because they genuinely want to help us. And we should, be, uh, be, we should beware ourselves of the 1% bad people. I think that's a judgment also that's needed. Uh, so can we control others? I think if we are nice to them, they'll come back to us. I think we can, that's my belief. So, so practice, it's very difficult, I can tell you, but I think we should all start practicing. Now imagine a situation, I'm sure Gayatri ma'am, Jasjeet ma'am, you do it all the time, but you're running a university, you've got you know, 400 faculty members and another fact, 400 sir, employees and like 4,000 students. Your, we would like to visit your university also. Absolutely ma'am, that goes without saying. I think all the teachers and students should do that. I think once Corona happens, but I'm telling you, you know, you put 5,000 people together with different styles. There is so much conflict. Everyone is fighting with each other. And I think we have to control their emotions by guiding them. And, uh, and I think you do it every day. I'm sure you do that, ma'am. Uh, yeah, my yeah, mother's yeah. a teacher. I've seen that she's been a principal of a school. I've seen how beautifully she does that. So there's one more question from Aarti, ma'am. Uh, she's saying self-awareness is more helpful to change a person or some motivational lecture person. See, a motivational lecture or a person can only guide you. We can only give you and show you the light. Ultimately, it's you who have to improve. Uh, I listen, me and Vivek, you know, for example, do this lecture every day. And I learn every day, you know, because some very interesting questions come out, uh, new thoughts come about. But ultimately, I have to practice it. Uh, someone, no one else can make us aware about ourselves. Even psychiatrist Gayatri Mayam will only show us the mirror. They will not give us the answer. Right. So the answer has to come from ourselves. So that's the way right. I'll answer this, Aarti ma'am. Uh, I think we have to also close. So I'll just take one more question. Uh, Himani ma'am is asking how to maintain peace and cool at home with kids in the lockdown. I think that's a very good one. Uh, I think, first of all, I, I spoke about the fact that you're all Corona warriors. And I truly believe this because I think many of you would be ladies and uh, that's what most of our teachers are. And it's uh, double more difficult because your mothers, you're taking care of the household. Uh, you're also daughters or daughters-in-law. Uh, and, and naturally the stress is high because uh, you also have to take your online lectures. So what do you do? So I would have uh, three thoughts for all of you. Uh, first is uh, have some 
uh, you know, post your online lectures, take some non-mobile time or non-TV time. So switch off your mobile, uh, switch off your television at least for one hour every day, read a book and uh, uh, make sure that, you know, you can relax or speak to your children, speak to your husband, your family. I think the second thing is all of you would have some hobby, even if you've forgotten it. Yeah. Uh, start pursuing that hobby. I think this is time you'll never get back. Get up a little early in the morning or late at night. If you paint, start painting. If you cook, cook a lovely meal. If you sing, do that. But don't sing in the bathroom. Sing with your family. But do something that you've always liked and you build on that. There's so much amazing stuff which is available in the web, man. For example, I started baking. I used to always, I wanted to be, I always did want to learn how to bake and I've started doing that. Uh, and you can do that because uh, you have the time now. Uh, I mean, you don't have to be uh, in, the, in the class or uh, in the school from nine to five, which you had to earlier. But yeah, it's difficult. I think uh, Parveena Mem is saying it's three times more difficult. I, I get it. I know it's difficult. <laughs> Uh, you know, I at an average speak nowadays seven hours every day on Zoom, ma'am. And I can tell you, I'm already feeling a little bit of spondylitis. Uh, so what I've done is I've picked up my uh, laptop and I've taken it a little above so you can innovate. Uh, yes, it's not easy, uh, but this is also going to be uh, the new normal, as they say. Uh, so there will be hybrid classes. Uh, there will be a use a lot of online. Uh, I think the last thought I leave your teachers, ma'am, would be the concept of a Gurukul. So if you remember the Mahabharata, uh, the Pandavas and the, and the Kauravas, they went to a Gurukul and the Guru was someone called Dronacharya. Now, Dronacharya was not the only Guru there. Below Drona, Dronacharya, there were probably 500 assistants supporting Dronacharya. But you only remember Dronacharya because he was the key Guru. I think the world post-COVID is going to be like this. It's going to be uh, a situation where there'll be 10 star teachers in every school. Others will be supporting those 10 star teachers and that star is not going to come from seniority. It's going to come on how good you are. Remember that you're actors now. Every lecture of yours is recorded. Even if it's not recorded, parents are watching it. Who knows, neighbors are watching it. So you're actors. And so it's, it's a chance to also act and smile and, uh, you know, be, be good. But you have to decide whether you want to be the Dronacharya or you want to be one of our assistants. So you'll have to step up, ma'am. Yes, it's difficult, but you'll have to learn new skills. And that's the order of the day. Uh, and that's what I tell my faculty members also. So it's, I've, I've enjoyed myself a lot. I know it's, it's, it's uh, anything beyond 40 minutes starts becoming stressful on Zoom. So uh, we won't extend it, but I'll request either Gayatri ma'am or Jasjeet ma'am to please close. And once again, I really, really thank all of you. And uh, Shulin is your home. We have a beautiful, beautiful campus. You know, we are very lucky. I'm at 20 degrees Celsius right now. I'm in the middle of a pine forest. I've got beautiful flowers blooming. I'm gonna make you jealous. But then I took this life uh, of leaving Bombay and Delhi and coming back to Himachal. So over to you, one of you, Jajit, ma'am, Gayatri, ma'am. Uh, I think you all yeah, must yeah, have yeah. enjoyed uh, the session. And uh, my message to all my staff members is that utilize this lockdown period in a positive manner. Thank you, Atul, sir. Thank you, Vivek, sir. And thank you, Shikha for this uh, very knowledgeable session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gayatri, ma'am. And I also have I'll to take one minute, Shik Atul, sir. Yeah, sure. If sure, we have time, I'll... Yeah, Please, thank I have all the time. Thank you so much, Atul, sir. And not to forget Vivek, sir, also. It was a pleasure being with you all. And I, what I tell my teachers is, this is the time when you can learn two things. Go with a new skill and take care of your health. And I think both of them would lead to creativity or happiness. If we are happy, we would definitely, it's a trickle down effect. So we would put that Absolutely. to the children as well. So what we did with this, a small example, I'll tell you, we had Mother's Day a few days back. So what we did was we had virtual party on Zoom. Wow. It was a new concept, but everybody enjoyed. It's something which was different. The parents also, mothers also could dress up. They dressed up in a party attire, made something good. And this is how we need to. So every day we need to, you are right, it's a big challenge for us. For new normal would be easy as a word, but very difficult practically teachers are facing that, right? So every day they have to come up with a new idea, something because it's very difficult to make the children inside that box, inside that frame. The attention span is very less. And for elder children, 
i think with the zoom on they can go for netflix they can listen to justin bieber and everything so putting them inside the frame is again different but thank you so, so I, much i i jajit ma'am i i heard a very beautiful quote from a dear friend of mine he said we as teachers are now competing with video games and cricket matches so we have to be as yes. good and as entertaining as them perfect yes sir we, this is exactly what i think we are facing we going through because i also have a daughter i can see in each time we need to check is she on netflix or she is playing some game or listening to the class so it's, again Wonderful. it is difficult so we need everybody it's a challenging time and i think thank you for making all the teachers also covid warriors they this is the least i think we can do to validate their efforts and thank Absolutely. you sikha it's really wonderful and maybe we have many more together such sessions as a you know motivation for our teachers also thank you atul sir definitely thank we do sir. a lot of work on uh, online education uh, whenever you are ready jasjeet ma'am gayatri ma'am yes. i'll be happy to uh, to take you through best practices in online education and okay. how do you sort of make them more effective but i also wanted to thank shikha you might not know shikha ma'am but she is my yes. sister also uh gayatri ma'am and jajit ma'am so shikha is also okay. my sister i know so, shikha for uh, years sir i was earlier in jalandhar so she, we are together for i think last 7 8 years lovely lovely so thank you shikha for making this happen <laughs> everyone uh, okay. there is amazing energy in your school maintain it be happy be safe i this is uh, amazing for me because i'm going back with so much energy and it comes because of such a wonderful positive energy of all of you thank you have a great day bye bye thank you, thank you. same to you bye